cold morning here in Robinson County, North Carolina. I think it's supposed to start warming up tomorrow, some. Of course, watching the forecast, it says it's supposed to warm up on the East Coast next week. See how that goes. Oh, goodness. Anywho, anyhow, anyway, let's take our drive to work this morning. Tragic news. A C-130 airplane, specifically one designed for fighting forest fires, crashed in Australia. It's an American airplane with American crew down there in support of uh, efforts to defeat the forest fires that are plaguing Australia. The plane crashed. Remember those firefighters, the, their families uh, during this time? Remember Australia, what they're going through right now. It's, you know, a lot for them to contend with. Forest, forest fires are still ongoing. A lot of destruction, death, and it's, and it's from the extent of everything I've read about it, um, their forest fires are going to have a definitive impact for years to come. And not to make light of the situation, but one thing about certain events like that that do happen eventually is that new life will eventually spring up. Um, a lot of people don't see beyond that initially, but new life will reemerge at some point in time. But right now, the, the, the need to contain and extinguish these fires is the utmost of importance. And, you know, after all my time in the Army, I spent most of my time at Fort Bragg, most of y'all know. And every year, there's a portion of the post that the uh, installations, Wildlife Management, Forestry Division, manages they, they burn off a portion of the undergrowth every year and uh, part of the reason um, is to allow new new life new undergrowth to come up new flora and fauna also controls the deer tick population to some extent um, so it cuts down on the the events of Rocky Mountain spotted fever and Lyme disease um, more importantly it kills off a lot of the underbrush that can be used to, or that turns into fuel for a forest fire event. Um, so it helps to mitigate that. Now, way back when I was there the first time in, in 1987 to 89, they didn't really, they weren't, I don't think they'd come up with that concept at that point in time. I want to say it was the Spring or summer of 88, they had a real bad fire on Fort Bragg. It, you know, they burned up a lot of rangeland um, because of a lot of the dry undergrowth. Um, and what they call it on, on Fort Bragg and other places, that do it, it's called a controlled burn. And like I said, basically it just kind of burns off the undergrowth and, and burns up a lot of that tinder that could actually cause a forest fire to rage or jump fire breaks. That's the other thing. Fort Bragg is mired with fire breaks just for that, you know, purpose. Um, fire breaks are not always 100% successful because it only stops the ground base. But 
when you're talking about you got 100 foot pine trees. Um, you don't really want pine trees in this part of the country. Um, the core of them, especially the older the tree is, can be extremely volatile. You got what does pine trees produce? Produce pine tar. Pine tar eventually flammable. Pine trees have been known to explode in forest fires. It gets so hot and all that tar and pitch in the inside of the tree gets to a, a point that it can't do nothing. It, so it causes the tree to pop. When it does, you got exploding embers that jump tree to tree. That's why they say fire breaks are not 100%. They're, they're necessary for ground based, but doesn't always mitigate the you know the, the potential of an air burst that causes it to jump over, not to mention prevailing winds can blow fire and embers through the air into other trees too. Um, so yeah, they do that and, and you know we had our own issues, we've got our own issues nation, here in this nation when it comes to that. The year before last, they, you know, you had the forest fires that were taking place in the Smoky Mountains, you know, um, really devastated a lot of acres there in the Smoky Mountains, uh, near Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, you know, yeah, big forest fires changed the landscape forever, it, and uh, make no bones about it. A at the same time, life will eventually regenerate. California, Oregon, Wyoming, Colorado, even parts of Arizona, New Mexico, and places like that have experienced forest fires. They're devastating. They absolutely are. And we can prevent them to an extent. I mean, you're not going to stop nature. Case example, um, forest fires that are started by, you know, lightning hit. That's been many that have started that way. Um, we as humans can take more precaution if we're camping, making sure our, far, you know, our camp fires are extinguished or, you know, we're not pouring hot coals from our barbecue out on the ground. If you smoke, making sure your cigarettes, pipes, or cigars are completely extinguished before you flick that butt or, you know, what have you out. Um, but you've also got them people that just love to see things burn and they set stuff on fire just to watch it burn. So, yeah. I, why I'm on this, one of my best friends an EMT and a firefighter, got a lot of friends that are in in the firefighting industry and I've had friends that were in the army that sometimes the army's been called here in the U.S. to go and help fight forest fires. Um, and again, like I said, it's devastating what it can do to a vegetated wood piece of ground. Not to mention, if they burn hot enough, you know, just the heat can be devastating. World War II, when we bombed Japan, you know, using incendiary bomb because the majority of the housing in and around most of the places in Japan were wood-based buildings. Another incident was uh, in Germany, the bombing of Hamburg. The fires got so hot and the heat so much that it created firestorms within the remnants of the city. And basically, temperatures got so hot that anything in its path was just almost vaporized. That's the devastation of forest fire, even a city fire can happen. And, and so my hat's off to the men and women who each and every day put on that firefighter uniform and uh, 
put their life on the line every day to go out knowing that they could walk into a burning building or a, a burning forest not knowing what they're going to encounter and you know they've got to come up with a strategy to defeat and mitigate that fire um, in some cases they'll show up firefighters will show up at a building and putting the fire out you know is no longer an option and the building's already engulfed to a point that they just really try to contain it and keep it from spreading by mitigating it. Sometimes they can show up and they can get a fire up before it fully engulfs the building. It's just hard to say. Um, you know, your bigger cities, they, you know, they always have the potential of a high-rise fires. Those are hard to defeat. Part of the reason is, you know, you can't get a fire truck on top of a building. All you can do is hope that the hoses that are in the building haven't been damaged, that the, the water valves that connect to those hoses haven't been damaged, and the firefighters can get to that floor and get the water going and get the fire put out on that floor or floors if it's multiple. God rest the souls of those on 9-11 that went in and tried to do what they could before the towers fell, not to mention the surrounding buildings that were damaged and things of that nature. But I think about these things because where, where I live at, a lot of woods and things that surround us, six hours from the mountains, um, in, in mountain, especially in a mountain region with forest fire, or even in a low, low region, sometimes the only thing you do is you vomit from the air and that's what happened here was this aircraft was on supposed on a, on a run to drop fire retardant material and something happened and the parts go out to them and you know, to the, the families right now but anyway folks think about those people today um Remember them, remember the families, you know. And the fact, again, that, like I said, you know, we're trying to help Australia. Um, one reason is we've got a lot of, our, our nation's got a lot of experience fighting forest fires, given the size of our continent, the diverse makeup of it. Um, and the fact that we know what, what it can do. You know, and talking about bombing, you know, Japan used to, you know, during World War II had launched um, balloon bombs that floated over Oregon and Northern California and dropped and set several forest fires. Um, and that was where the 555th um, parachute, triple nickel, an all black parachute unit in World War II that kind of further enhanced the smoke jumpers uh, with the development of new gear and equipment to jump in and fight these forest fires. And they went and participated in those efforts. Uh, they didn't get to fight in the war, but they got to fight the, the fires set by our enemies. Um, little known fact, if you don't know, you can look it up on, find it probably on Wikipedia, or you can go to the Triple Nickel website um, and look that up. They went in and fought forest fires um, as part of their duties and functions as, as American paratroopers. And what a lot of people don't know is that World War II, with, with the development of American paratroopers, we actually had to go to the Forestry Service for some ideas because they had already been using smoke jumpers for a while. So we kind of had to go and pull some of their information in the development of airborne forces, so you can kind of see where the trade came into play there. Um, but anywho, anyhow, anyway. But yeah, it's just kind of tragic what's going on down there, and like I said, the loss of life and, and just the, the devastation that it 
that is happening right now. Um, again, it, it's going to change everything down in Australia for years to come. But rest assured that at some point in time, the life that they know will reemerge itself and it will recreate itself. And, um, will it be the same? No. But life will come back. Nature will eventually begin to reclaim the scarred land. Um, Efforts will probably be made eventually once they get everything contained to, to replant some of the timber. So, pray for me anyway, folks. Well, I'm going to cut this one off right about here right now. Um, as always, charities, I'd ask you to help out. Tunnels to Towers.org, Valor for Veterans, Pinup for Vets folds of honor. They can't do it by themselves, folks. Anything you can donate to help them would be greatly appreciated. Um, likewise, vendors, I'd ask you to look out and help. Money Quick Pond, Rayford Road, Fedville, North Carolina. Uh, Roberts Custom Woodwork, Unsung Patriot. Black Bag Resources, Black Rifle Coffee. Get your Black Rifle Coffee today. Uh, and again, like I said, help me out. My books, uh, prices have been reduced once again on my books. They're still available on Amazon. All the links are down below. Uh, likewise, my t-shirts for my Teespring site are down below as well. And I would also, at this point in time, like to give a special shout out to my friend and good buddy in Georgia, Kyle Lusk. Brother, appreciate you. If y'all don't know who he is, go check him out. He's got a channel on YouTube as well. Um, and sometimes you'll see him live on Friday night on JH 586, Georgia Shooter Connection as well. Uh, but I just want to give him a special shout out today. Um, he contacted me last night. He says, brother, I need your links to your books. I want to help you out. That just meant the world to me. And Kyle, I certainly appreciate you, brother. So until tomorrow, folks, God bless. Take care. This old soldier out.